The Kalahari Desert. One of the toughest places to survive on Earth. With temperatures soaring to 45 degrees in summer and plummeting as low as minus 15 in winter, very little survives here. The vast quantities of land, the complete lack of rainfall. I don't think that any of those animals will be left once the drought is over. Because most of them would have died. But in Namibia, one company is flipping the script, using salt water to grow food in the sand. They're not just farming, they're rewriting the rules of agriculture. We're at Imperani Farm in the Kalahari Desert to find out how salt tolerant crops are going to turn this barren desert green. It gives you that hope and optimism for, for, for just going out and do more. <laughs> you wouldn't want to drink that. You wouldn't want to farm with it. So. Access to fresh water is both a challenge for humans and animals, and it doesn't get much harder to get access to fresh water than in the desert. Yeah, as, as we know, Namibia is a very dry country, and uh, most of uh, our farmlands has uh, brackish waters, and uh, then we were looking at basically solutions on how we can assist because some of our friends has these farms and they are struggling at the moment, especially with the dry and the, uh, the, the dryness of the country. And uh, with the cattle, they didn't know what, what to do because basically it's very expensive to import feed. So we were actually looking at solutions on how to tackle this problem. So that's we, we were looking at what, we, what do we have abundance of? So we're looking at brackish water, uh, sea water, and it's more or less the same. So we then started looking at solutions in terms of then we, um, going on Google. That's where we actually found seawater solutions. We had been playing around with, you know, our concept in Scotland at this point of, of taking the salt water from the sea and applying it directly to this increasingly um, unproductive land in the coast and growing, what, growing halophytes. Um, and halophytes are just salt tolerant crops. They, they generally grow in the intertidal zone between, between the sea and the land. So every day they're submerged by salty seawater and that the plant physiology is as such that that's what they need to do to survive. And they're incredibly productive plants. It's generally not considered a, a traditional approach when you think about any kind of agriculture or restoration. You know, normally salt water is, is the enemy. You know, ask any farmer, they'd be like, "Well, we can't use this water. It's it's too salty. Our crops will die." But you know, the crops that people are growing are already suffering major losses across the world because as as the world heats up, the, the rains are less, and the and the fresh groundwater is getting completely depleted. So we need to start thinking about the way we use our resources. So just how easy is it to grow saltwater crops in the desert? Chris took us to Imperani Farm to meet the team who are pioneering this practice. But the desert climate is harsh and unforgiving, and even with a 4x4 truck, it is still easy to get stuck 
and stranded. Luckily for us, farmers Gus and Henry were nearby to come and save the day and we finally made it to Imperani Farm. Welcome to Imperani Farm. Thanks! Yeah. Here we Gosh, go. Gosh, it's hot. It's very hot, it's very large, and it's very dry. Yeah. After their heroic desert rescue, Talia had the chance to speak to the owners of Imperani Farm, Henry and Gus, to find out just how difficult it is running a farm in the middle of the Kalahari Desert. How long have you had this farm? Since my dad bought it in 2000. Yeah, bought it in 2000, so I guess for 24 years. I grew up on the farm. I was like six years old. And yeah. This has been your life? It's been my life. Still having the struggle every day. Yeah? Yeah. But you have a smile on your face. Yeah, I love it. You love it? It's my passion, yeah. What is your favorite element of the farm? The rain. <laughs> <laughs> because with rain comes life. It doesn't rain very often in Namibia. No, not at all. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, the frequency of the rainy season on, in a normal year? Okay, so for, for, for the last eight, nine-ish years, we've, we've had some, some bad drought, but it was always, some years were fruitful, but some years were, were, were bad. But you were always able to, to get through the, through, the, through the drought, through the year, for the next rainy season. But for last year, we had so little rain, and for this year, almost none. Mm -hmm. So this year and last year's drought combined is destroying us this year. It's kind of crazy, like sometimes it's great, sometimes it's kind of a struggle. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's hard, especially when you're like in this arid region. Mm. Yeah. Tell me about those struggles. What is the hardest thing about having a farm here in Namibia? Um, probably the distance with the fuel prices and um, the droughts, uh, rain, small amounts of rain. Mm. we've been getting the last couple of years it's really sad the drought is really killing us in Namibia this year for sure this year and as i said i don't think that any of those animals will be left once the drought is over because most of them would have died and then what and then i guess next year if the rains come you have to start all over again The increasing pressures caused by drought led Henry and Gus to Nara and their salt water crop project. And for the first time, Chris is about to show Talia that salt water crops can be grown in the desert. Wow! This is so impressive! Yep, salt marsh in the desert. Look how healthy it is! Yeah. Are you surprised at how well it's doing? It's one of the things um, that I was looking forward to seeing the results of. Uh, not only can it just, can we grow it here, but will it thrive and survive? Um, and look at it, it's like a, it's like a carpet. Yeah, you got your answer. Yep, yep. So, I mean, that's how we know that it's, it's happy with the conditions enough. It's growing really well. It's, it's spreading out. It's, um, it's taking the room. So, yeah, we're, we're quite, we're quite, um, we're quite impressed with what we've seen so far. And I'm guessing it, uh, it tastes quite salty. Can I taste Yeah, yeah, of course yeah. you can. Yeah, you just take the top part and you can eat it raw. Mmm. Salty, yep. but delicious. Yep. Wow. So now you've got this, the test results are positive. What's the next step? Scale up. When I was young, my daddy said, gotta keep one eye open in your bed. Cause there's a time coming when the devil gonna come for you. So my trigger fingers stay prepared. I've got my weapon and I got my prayers. Cause if you don't run,
Uh, it's a big moment, actually. You know, for the past two years, I've been doing the research and development side, trying to figure out how the crop responds best in these conditions. And we've gotten to a point where we've, we're quite confident we know how it behaves and how we can make it as productive as possible. So now that the nursery stage is over, these plants are are old enough, mature enough to get put in the field where you know the conditions are a lot more harsh. But at this stage in their life, they don't need as much water. They can. Um, they can just continue to grow outward and expand and use the entire space. The funeral <laughs> of conventional farming and the advent of halophyte farming. I, it, it's a really good feeling. Um, from where we started up to here, it was so difficult getting here to this point because it's a it's a huge challenge just to get like one or two of the seeds to 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 sprout yeah that's it it was it uh, difficult in the, in the beginning but as as the people say is uh, if you believe in something and you stick to it then at the end of the day you will you will reap the rewards we wouldn't have a project if it wasn't for um people like like henry and gustav in terms of this bigger scale we would be able to give a lot more of fodder to the to the animals that need it so much. So we are hoping on getting this up and running really, really quick and really, really fast. We are now, you know, we're learning more and more every every project we do, every every week that goes by, we learn how to fit to farm the desert um, in a more effective way. And I think um, I think this is going to be a, a real positive future for this place, that's for sure. <laughs>